In 1935, the Saar Basin was returned to Germany after a 15-year occupation by Britain and France following World War I. It was a small region along the northeast border of France. In 1936, in violation of the terms of the Treaty of Versailles, Hitler sent German troops into the Rhineland, the region on the eastern border with France, Belgium, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands. This was an effort by Hitler to reacquire all territory seized by the Allies and rebuild the German Empire. Two years later, he annexed Austria, his homeland. Later that year, Hitler signed the Munich Agreement, taking the Sudetenland, and then followed it up by annexing the rest of Czechoslovakia. Britain and France did nothing to stop these moves, but made a promise to Poland. They drew a line in the sand, saying that if Hitler invaded Poland, Britain and France would declare war. On September 1, 1939, Hitler tested that ultimatum, sending his troops into Poland. Appeasement was over. After Dunkirk, France fell quickly. Germany occupied the northern part of France and set up a puppet government in the south known as the Vichy government. This left Britain as the only country standing in Hitler's way of controlling all of northern Europe. It was at this time that Italy joined the war as an ally of Germany. With the addition of Italy, Germany controlled all of Central Europe. In the summer of 1940, Germany launched an air campaign with his Luftwaffe, known as the Battle of Britain. He wanted to complete control of the skies before launching an invasion of Britain. Every night, the Luftwaffe bombed cities and airfields in England. On a single day, he sent 1,000 planes to pound England. But the Royal Air Force was up to the task. They used a brand new technology to plot the flight paths of German planes. It was the first successful use of radar. The Royal Air Force was successful enough that by November, Hitler called off the invasion of Britain indefinitely. They still bombed England, but now Britain could go on the offensive and bomb German cities as well. In 1939, as Hitler marched across Europe, the U.S. government began to shift its position from isolationism and neutrality to aiding allies. In 1939, FDR announced the cash and carry policy. It officially ends the arms embargo that had been in place since 1936. Countries at war could purchase weapons and supplies from the U.S., provided that they traveled across the Atlantic and picked them up. They must also pay in cash to avoid any issues of debt. One year later, FDR announced the Destroyers for Bases deal. It was an agreement with Great Britain in which the U.S. sent U.S. Navy destroyers to the Royal Navy in exchange for land rights on British possessions to establish naval or air bases, primarily in the Caribbean. Finally, in 1941, as Britain stood alone against the aggression of Nazi Germany, Congress passed the Lend-Lease Act, giving the U.S. the ability to rent out or allow the Allies to borrow war materials to fight Germany. The U.S. has now become the arsenal of democracy. Our weapons are fighting the Nazis in Europe. Senator Nye from North Dakota formed a committee in 1936 to investigate the actions of bankers and weapons makers from 1914 to 1918. The Nye Report, as it was called, convinced millions of citizens that the bankers who had lent money to the European allies had been the merchants of death and had tricked the country into war because they wanted to make a profit at any cost. This will become the basis of U.S. foreign policy as Europe and Asia get closer to conflict. The Nye Committee led to the America First Committee. It was the leading isolationist group that fought to prevent U.S. entry into World War II. At its peak, it had 800,000 members including future President Gerald Ford. Its most prominent spokesperson was celebrity Charles Lindbergh, who was very critical of FDR's foreign policy at the end of the 1930s. The organization disbanded shortly after the Pearl Harbor attack. On September 27, 1940, the Axis powers are formed, as Germany, Italy, and Japan become allies with the signing of the Tripartite Pact in Berlin. The pact provided for mutual assistance that would should any of the signatories suffer attack by any nation not already involved in the war. This formalizing of the alliance was aimed directly at neutral America, designed to force the U.S. to think twice before venturing in on the side of the Allies. The pact also recognized the two spheres of influence. Japan acknowledged the leadership of Germany and Italy in the establishment of a new order in Europe, while Japan was granted lordship over Greater East Asia. The presidential election of 1940 was fought in the shadow of World War II, as the U.S. was emerging from the Great Depression. Incumbent President Franklin Roosevelt, a Democrat, broke with tradition and ran for a third term, which became a major issue. The surprise Republican candidate was Maverick businessman Wendell Wilkie, 
the dark horse who crusaded against Roosevelt's failure to end the Depression and eagerness for war. Roosevelt, aware of strong isolationist sentiment in the U.S., promised there would be no foreign wars if he were re-elected. Wilkie conducted an energetic campaign and managed to revive Republican strength in areas of the Midwest and the Northeast. However, Roosevelt won a comfortable victory by building strong support from labor unions, big city political machines, ethnic voters, and the traditionally Democratic Solid South. The subsequent passing of a 22nd Amendment of the U.S. Constitution in 1947 renders this election the only occasion in American history in which a candidate was elected to a third term as president. By June of 1941, Hitler felt secure enough to go back on his word to Stalin. He was very interested in Soviet oil fields. The Axis powers attacked eastward and took control of most of Europe. They got to within the city limits of Moscow before being stopped by Soviet forces. Now that Hitler had attacked the Soviet Union, they were allied with England. This is considered by many historians to be a major mistake by Hitler. Making an enemy of Stalin will push the Soviet Union to join the Allies and would lead to Hitler's downfall. This map shows an overview of what we just discussed. Hitler's aggression across Europe in the first two years of the war. His blitzkrieg was able to conquer most of the continent in a very short period of time. His troops tirelessly traveled across Europe and defeated sometimes superior armies with this strategy. As the war dragged on, FDR and Churchill met to discuss a post-war world. The Atlantic Charter was a joint declaration issued in August of 1941 by the U.S. and Great Britain. Among its major points were a nation's right to choose its own government, the easing of trade restrictions, and a plea for post-war disarmament. The document is considered one of the first key steps towards the establishment of the United Nations in 1945. The Atlantic Charter included eight common principles. Among them, the U.S. and Britain agreed not to seek te territorial gains from the war, and they opposed any territorial changes made against the wishes of the people concerned. The two countries also agreed to support the restoration of self-government to those nations who had lost it during the war. Additionally, the Atlantic Charter stated that people should have the right to choose their own form of government. Other principles included access for all nations to raw materials, needed for economic prosperity, and an easing of trade restrictions. The document also called for international cooperation to secure improved living and working conditions for all, freedom of the seas, and for all countries to abandon the use of force. In 1940, in response to Japan's attack on French Indochina, FDR seized all Japanese assets in the U.S. The U.S. also began an embargo of all oil exports, severely threatening Japan's oil supply. As a result, Japan lost access to 75% of its overseas trade, and 88% of its imported oil. Japan, knowing it only lasts two years without American oil, shifted their focus to the Dutch East Indies to tap their oil reserves. In response to the U.S. oil embargo and freezing of assets, Japan launches a surprise attack on the U.S. Pacific Fleet stationed in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, on December 7, 1941. The U.S. was now at war with Japan. The major Allied powers in World War II were Great Britain, the Soviet Union, the United States, France, until German occupation, and China. The common purpose of the Allies was to defeat the Axis powers and create a peaceful post-war world. Britain and the U.S. wanted to end fascism and foster democracy in Europe, whilst the Soviet Union wanted to crush Germany and dominate Europe with communism. Other minor allies included Belgium, Canada, Poland, and the Netherlands. The Axis powers of World War II were Germany, Japan, and Italy. The three nations signed the Tripartite Pact in September of 1940 to promote mutual prosperity and welfare. They supported each other's goal for territorial expansion and wanted the destruction of the Soviet Union, and acknowledged each other's supremacy in their respective geographic areas. Other minor allies to the Axis included Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, and Yugoslavia. 